Hello all. <clears throat> Welcome to chapter eight in advanced marketing. This chapter is about ethics and social responsibility. So let's just jump right into it. Um, companies obviously have a duty to um, society. They have the, a duty to do, to do the right thing and uh, protect others, protect stakeholder groups. And so it's a big deal. So we have chapters and even classes and uh, I presume some places it may even be degree plans that are or degree programs that are devoted 100% to this. Uh, consumers are getting much uh, more savvy and uh, worldly and conscious about the impact that companies have on society. And so uh, companies need to be aware of this and um, uh, kind of comply. OK, so. In this chapter, we're talking about both ethics and this whole concept of social responsibility. These things need to kind of permeate the entire organization. Um, you know, it helps in planning. It helps maintain trust and relationships and protect stakeholders. Um, and it's, it's really a good part of marketing strategy these days, for sure. Uh, social responsibility is just this idea that companies have an an obligation to minimize the negative impact on stakeholders. We'll talk about stakeholders uh, in just a moment. Uh, so um, lots of things are considered part of social responsibility, you know, obeying laws at the most basic level, uh, holding principles and standards, uh, donating to society, uh, not, not causing harm to employees and consumers, but even, you know, the economic responsibility of making a profit is considered part of a social responsibility. If you don't make profit, you go out of business, lots of people lose jobs. And so that's that's not good for society either. So know that it's not just about uh, kind of the touchy-feely things. It is it is um, targeted at, you know, just making, making profitability. So here is kind of the pyramid of responsibility. It's in the book. Um, mentioned these briefly. Um, so, uh, quite simply, like it says there, be profitable, obey the law, be ethical, and be a good corporate citizen, because it uh, will benefit the organization in many particular ways. Um, kind of a subcategory of social responsibility is just sustainability. This has to do with the natural environment. It's about using less water. It's about polluting less. It's about using less energy. Um, you know, things like that. Um, typically, companies that do a good job with sustainability, they will um, promote that, okay? Just, um, uh, you know, they market themselves as green and uh, they target green customers and uh, it can work well. Uh, unfortunately, some companies take it too far uh, and, and they mislead customers. They claim that their products are super good for the environment when they not, may not necessarily be so. And, and the, the sad thing is a lot of times is, is consumers can't necessarily prove that they aren't eco-friendly. So it just kind of uh, allows companies to take advantage of uh, the marketplace. Okay, marketing ethics, just basically basic code of standards and, and conduct, okay. Um, you know, like it says their most basic standards are, you know, law, but there are other ethical standards that aren't law at all, okay? So if you don't, if you don't kind of obey standards, all these things happen, exchange process could, can, can uh, break down, consumers find you're ethical, they're not gonna buy from you, so there is no exchange. Uh, there is no trust. There's a lot of dissatisfaction. There could be legal action. Um, could be all kinds of problems. Okay, you know if you if you don't far, follow ethical practices, I've already kind of alluded to this, but it can negatively impact uh, the success of your marketing. Okay, you know global trust as related to ethics. You know different types of organizations have different levels of perceived trust from consumers. Um, so technology, super highly trusted, government, uh, not so much, the media, not so much as well. Um, it's hard, hard to be ethical and hard to be socially responsible. It's expensive, okay? Research has shown, though, that that effort um, is, is paid back sometimes in spades. 
uh, through you know increased patronage, increased profitability, uh, things like that. Okay, um, so you know things like privacy. It's, it's kind of a gray area there. Um, you know, trademarks and brand names are are um, you know you've got to do what it takes to protect those, and that in and of itself is also uh, pretty costly. Okay. Types of misconduct you find in organizations, discrimination, abusive behavior. I'm not going to read all of these, but um, internet problems, retaliation for people that don't like negative things that are going on, theft, for example, um, you know, privacy issues, illegal hiring practices, uh, things like that, and even you know, providing not so good products is considered. Uh, kind of a violation of ethical problems in marketing lots of ethical issues okay product related ethical issues the product itself if it's harmful if you don't disclose that it's harmful if there's substandard design if products are counterfeit those are all kind of you know some ethical dilemma areas uh, within marketing pricing if things like price discrimination price fixing uh, predatory pricing, those types of things that uh, uh, some ethical black and white areas, some ethical gray areas there as well, okay? Supply chain is, has to do with sourcing, labor issues, quality control, um, and also the, uh, you know, uh, working condition issues. If you're using, uh, you know, foreign members in your supply chain, there's, there's a lot of, uh, evidence over the years of American companies taking advantage of lax labor laws in other other markets. So that's a problem. Promotion related, lots of uh, misleading, you know, deception, um, you know, fraud, products not doing what you claim they do, all kinds of things. Okay. Different places that are organizations that regulate ethics. Uh, Business, Better Business Bureau join, joining, um, you know, industry organizations. Uh, following laws obviously is good. Um, Self-regulation is is good. You um, allows you to um, save some money and also basically, you know, show some transparency. Consumers like when you're transparent. Okay, so companies do this all the time. They find something a flaw in their product. They will immediately recall it without waiting for some organization to demand that they recall it. Happens a lot in the, the food industry. They find some listeria or some E. coli or something. Uh, they will immediately do something and not wait for someone else to determine uh, what they should do. So being proactive uh, is, is definitely super valuable. Okay. Um, limitations, you know, if, if, you self-regulate, but others don't worry about it. You know, you could end up uh, spending more money on things that the other companies maybe don't. Okay. A lot of associations don't really have enforcement powers. Government, government can be all over the place and maybe not necessarily uh, equipped to fully regulate what's going on and enforce things. Okay. Code of ethics, formal statement that basically tells us what we uh, expect of our employees. You know, we, we can put it on the wall in the break room, but you know, it, it can be, there can be training ever so often uh, to inform our employees and make sure that it's in the forefront of their minds. Know that codes of ethics change over time um, just due to, you know, advancements in, in the world of business and the world of marketing. You know, there used to not be a big, you know, privacy uh, issue and now there is so you would have to revise your code of conduct code of ethics uh, based on that okay note it is impossible to resolve every ethical concern so uh, just you need to kind of address the major ones and if there's some some minor ones some that that's there's a bit of a gray area those are probably less important although if you did have the resources you, you could definitely uh, also address them but it just may be difficult to do so okay um, all right core values and core co codes of conduct you can find these six usually you know respect trustworthiness caring 
um, be fair, so on and so on. If, if you can uh, adopt those as core values in your organization, it should trickle down into your marketing plan and your personal uh, selling approaches and all kinds of different areas it would be a significant advantage. Okay. Um, key considerations in developing uh, the code of ethical conduct. I'm not going to read these to you, but just basically identify the areas, figure out how you could address those issues, and then take some sort of action on that, update as necessary. Um, ethical leadership. You, know, you need um, individuals in charge that have a high moral compass, you know, significant ethical uh, uh, you know, outlook. And uh, from there, things uh, can proceed to allow you to be a pretty ethical organization. OK, you know, you, you lead the leaders lead by example. Um, if they're acting ethical. It will trickle down to uh, the employees as well. Consumers will see that and it's good for everybody. OK, um, ethics should be kind of one of the, the main values of the organization. Um, if it's not, you're going to run into some problems down the road. OK, you know, you get ethical leadership at the top, creates ethical cor corporate culture that guides employee behavior, dealing with consumers, the way you, you engage in marketing and um, just creates an overall ethical environment that nothing but positive for for everyone okay um, you know what is the relationship between an ethical climate and financial performance you know ethical climate you know makes requires you to consider all stakeholders when you are making decisions you know if you're going to start manufacturing furniture where are you going to get the wood from? Is it going to impact local forests? Is it going to impact local employees, local industries, customers, the environment, uh, suppliers, all, the, all those types of things, okay? So you have to kind of consider uh, all of that, okay? Um, if you create the significant ethical climate, like it says there, the, the second major bullet point, um, you know, firm or employees become motivated, they become committed, uh, and they, they love their job a whole lot more than if they are unethical. Um, I'll give you an example of the opposite happening. I, I used to work for a company. Uh, we had a bunch of outside salespeople. And um, uh, at one point in time, I was asked to, I was not a salesperson. I was in marketing. I, I was asked to fly to Arizona to basically spy on one of our salespeople. And so uh, they suspected suspected he wasn't doing his job and was was maybe doing some unethical things and um, they sent me to spy on them and I just didn't think that that was really an appropriate uh, activity to uh, engage in. Um, I did it. I probably shouldn't have but uh, you know that kind of reflected the, the, kind of the corporate culture of the organization. It was the, a lot of mistrust and um, you know uh, finger pointing and blame and it was it was a bit of a problem okay uh, so stakeholder orientation it's just basically again you are uh, really focused on the impact of everything you do on the different stakeholders employees the environment the community customers uh, society things like that okay so you've got to keep them at the forefront of your mind for sure okay Marketing financial performance, lots of profit benefits of being ethical and being socially responsible. Like it says here, it creates trust, builds reputation, contributes to productivity, loyalty, profits, market value. You spend less money fixing problems because um, you are addressing them ahead of time. You know, if a company has an unethical product and they refuse to recall it at some point, the damage is going to get greater and greater and greater. And once they finally do acknowledge it and try to fix a problem, it's going to be a lot more expensive. Okay, strategic planning. Does ethics and social responsibility fit? Absolutely. Uh, absolutely fits into strategic planning. Um, you're going to have some sort of ethical compliance program, um, have some uh, understanding of the impacts on the firm. Uh, the risks involved, what, what may incur if you don't 
you know, follow, you know, a code of ethics and social responsibility, okay? Um, and like we said, uh, you lead by doing, top management should definitely be out front in the uh, fostering of an ethical climate and environment. So um, I believe that's all the slides. So that was kind of a, a quick rundown of this chapter. So um, make sure you read through it. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to let me know. Thanks.